What's going on, everybody? This is Alex at Boost Controlled Performance, and today I'm in a Nismo GTR that I have on the dyno, where it'll be a little bit safer for me to show you some of these Accutech custom features so we don't have to do it on a road. And I just want to take the opportunity to go over some of these features. This will especially come in handy to my e-tuning customers that are curious about how to change settings and whatnot. So, um, Let's, uh, let's get started. So first, let's just talk about the modes that you should be driving the car in, specifically when tuning. So if we go over to our mode selectors here, there's three different ones. This one's for the transmission, this one's for suspension, and this one is for traction control. To be clear, the suspension adjustment isn't going to be making any significant impact on what we're doing while we're tuning the vehicle. If you prefer to drive the car with the suspension in R mode where the dampening is going to be a little stiffer, that's fine. If you prefer to drive it in comfort mode where it'll be a little softer, that's fine too. The transmission, specifically the, the transmission tune that I give you, is set up to auto shift itself no matter what mode you're in but we want this to be in R mode. When it's in R mode, it ensures that we're gonna be running the maps that I intend for you to be running when you're driving at, at higher levels. So when I have the map set up for your car, or really any car that I do, R mode will be necessary if you're looking for maximum performance and looking for it to operate the way that I intend it to. So this should be in R mode when you're planning on racing the car. For traction control, we're going to turn this to the off position. Now to be clear, that doesn't mean that we have no traction control. We have an ECU based traction control that I put into your tune and it is active when the factory traction control is in the off position. So those are the two things that you should do. Next thing that you need to do while you're doing your pull, is you need to make sure the car is in manual mode you pull your shifter back it will go into the last mode that it was in it defaults to auto mode when I push over on this it actually changes shift mode up here now be careful because on the CBA cars this will actually sometimes reset your uh, drive modes over here <clears throat> so be careful of that needs to be in manual mode. Usually I'm going to ask you for a third or a fourth gear pull. I think you guys can figure out what third or fourth gear is. Next, let's take a look at how to make a boost target adjustment. If you look over at the screen right here, the gauges screen, we look at our boost gauge. Right now, it's reading boost. I'm going to go ahead and put it into neutral so I can free rev it you'll see that when we wrap the vehicle, the engine vacuum goes closer to zero. So if we want to adjust the boost, we're going to go over to our cruise switch. We're going to be specifically focused on the cancel button. This cancel button is like a toggle for your boost target. Right now I'm going down, and right now I'm going up. I want you to take a look at what's happening to the boost gauge while I'm doing that. It's changing your boost target. We're starting at about 11 PSI, working our way up to 20. This is how you control the boost on this car. It's very convenient, very easy, and it's very intuitive because it's actually accurate to what that gauge is showing. Right now the boost target is 20 PSI. Right now, the target is about 11 PSI. So that is how we adjust the boost. Now, before we talk about the rolling features, we need to talk about the gauge hijack mode, valet mode, and other map switching. Now, this, this is where it can get a little tricky, and I don't want people to get too confused by this. Most tunes, we're not gonna be utilizing this feature 
but I still want you guys to understand how they link together because they all kind of revolve around map switching mode. So the, the number one thing here that you probably are gonna wanna use is when we go into map switching mode, it'll actually hijack the coolant temperature gauge over here to read out ethanol content. A lot of people love this. So I'm gonna hijack that gauge right now, bam, 82% ethanol. So you're probably wondering how to do that. First, I'm gonna let you see how it goes back to normal after five seconds. What we're doing to do that is we're actually pressing and holding the cancel button. So before we were rocking it up and down to change our boost target, now we're gonna press and hold it. Watch what happens when I do that to the coolant temp gauge over there. The gauge is hijacked, we're in hijack mode. Now it goes back to normal. You probably also notice the coolant temperature gauge does the same thing to signify that we are in hijack mode. So another thing that we can do in hijack mode is we can actually switch maps. This is a feature, like I said, that will not be on very many cars. It's likely not on your car, but if it is, now you'll know what to do. So we're gonna press and hold cancel. And once we're in hijack mode, toggling up and down changes the map position. Map one is our default map on this car. Map two has more conservative ignition timing and air fuel target. Map eight is valet mode. So valet mode is great if you ever do have to valet one of these cars because every young dude that's a valet knows what it is. That was actually one of my first jobs and I took a picture of one of the very first GTRs I ever saw in person, it was red and I thought it was like the craziest thing ever because it, they had just come out. This was in 2009, and um, now I have a red GTR, so you, you, know, you never know how, how things are gonna go with your life. But anyway, right now we're in regular mode, and you'll notice that it revs up pretty quickly. So not only does valet mode limit the speed and the distance the car can be driven, but it limits the torque input. I'm flooring it right now when I do that. It severely dampens the amount of throttle input and torque that you can make. All I'm doing to put it in valet mode is I'm hijacking the gauges, going up to eight, and then pressing cancel again to confirm it. If you're ever unsure about whether or not it's in valet mode, you'll be able to tell pretty easily because the car is going to feel like a turd. Um, you can also look at the app, and then the app will tell you whether or not it's in valet mode, but um, that's how that feature works. So now that we're kind of wrapped up on all the different steering wheel controls for what can happen while we're stationary, let's talk about what we can do with launch control. So I've already got my drive mode selected from before. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the car into manual mode and I'm going to push my foot all the way down on the brake and I'm going to floor the gas pedal. So that's gonna put this car into launch mode. One really cool part about AccuTech is that we can actually change the launch RPM. This is especially convenient when your launch surface is changing or the traction of your tires is changing. You can actually adjust your launch RPM on the fly. I'm gonna show you, but I'm gonna do it quickly because we don't wanna leave it on launch control for too long. It'll get the clutches hot. You saw how I just adjusted it past 4,000 and then down to 3,000. And I was able to do that by simply rocking the switch up and down while launch control is active. So right now, remember, this is our boost controller right now. See the boost gauge over here? When I put it into launch control mode, it's gonna stop controlling the boost and it's gonna control our launch RPM. The next feature I wanna show you and this is going to be the last one that we need to go over is the rolling boost. This is probably the most popular question that I get when people are asking me, how do I drive my car after you tune it? They want to know how rolling boost works and I'll show you. It's very simple. All you need to do is you need to turn cruise control on. On this 17 and up Nismo here, the button's right here. On the uh, older cars, this, it's down here, but you'll figure out how to turn it on and off. 
once you turn it on, you'll see the indicator down there on the dash. Keep in mind that once cruise control is on, we cannot use this cruise toggle anymore to control our boost. This is only gonna be good for rolling launch at this point. So we're gonna set the speed that we wanna go from. So let's just say we wanna go from about a 40 roll. I'm gonna press the set button and we're at 41 miles an hour. Now it's gonna get a little loud when I downshift, but the idea here is that all you have to do is select the gear that you wanna be in, floor the gas pedal, and you will hear the turbo spool. As soon as the turbo spool and you're ready to go, you're gonna press the cancel button. So press in on it, not up or down, you're gonna press in on it. That is gonna be our start or our go to make the car move. So let's downshift it into second gear. I'm still at the speed I wanna be at, 40 miles an hour. I'm gonna floor the gas, you'll hear the turbos come up, and then I'm gonna hit cancel to go. And as you can see, that was pretty effective. We actually had a little bit of wheel spin here on the dyno, which isn't ideal, but it works very, very well. Even on really big turbo cars, it spools the turbos almost instantly. So that is a crowd favorite right there, and I enable it on all of my Ecutech tunes. The only time we don't recommend using the rolling boost is on stage one cars. So I will talk to you about that during the e-tuning process, whether or not I think that's a good idea. But many of you have more modifications than that. So that about wraps up all the different features that we have on the GTR when we tune it with Ecutech. Um, definitely leave a comment if you wanna know some more about how this car works, if you had some questions about some other systems on it. We have other videos like how to upload a tune with Ecutech, uh, how some of the other features work uh, on Cobb, for example. We don't support Cobb as much anymore for this platform, but we still have the video. Uh, we've got some videos about um, like what a thousand horsepower GTR is like and a, a demonstration of rolling boost. So, um, you know, if this was helpful to you, hit the like button, leave us a comment. We love seeing comments. And um, you know, consider subscribing because we make a lot of videos like this and we wanna continue helping out our customers and the community. So um, you know, any e-tuning related questions, there'll be a link in the description. Definitely appreciate you watching. Stay safe out there in your GTR. Have a good one.